The sea is a treasure trove of moments. There can be cruel ones. There can be fun ones. There can be mysteries hidden beneath the waves. Or maybe that's just a kraken. You can, you can never really be too sure. Doesn't stop people from banding together to pursue the romance of the adventure. So many souls embark to look for something bigger than them. I once did that, adventuring into the ocean with my friend. It didn't go well. Freaking tragedy waiting to happen. The other person didn't even know how to swim. Like, why go to the ocean when all you can do is sink? Like, oh my god, that's, that's so stupid. But, but that's the adventure. Uh, you challenge the odds and by the end of it, you formed such a bond that onlookers and rumor mongers can't help but wonder. Is there something more behind their banter? Behind the smiles or the hug? Is there something there? Of course, that didn't happen in my story. I think it's pretty clear. Uh, that wasn't a fun day at the docks. But uh, Luffy and Nami though. Yeah, no, the, the ocean might be holding a lot of romance for these two. At least, that's what a good chunk of people are hoping for. So welcome to the Paris Spotlight. Let's sit down, let me regale you with the highlights of Nami and Luffy and dive into the stormy seas that may yet still await the two. There are many classic moments in the life of these two that you're gonna hear from the rumor mongers at the fish market. The one no one can ever stop talking about, the moment Luffy gave Nami his straw hat before leaving to tenderize a shark that had taken a couple bites of her. That hat was important to Luffy, him giving it to her was a gesture expressing the care and trust from him to her. There were also the lengths Luffy went to in order to get Nami the medical care she needed. That was quite impressive. He saved her. And oh, oh, at the time Luffy challenged a god while Nami was in the vicinity. Dramatic stuff, my friends. How could we forget the time Luffy pushed buildings apart? Yes, Nami wasn't directly involved, but she was witness, and you know the rumor mongers. I'm sure you'll hear a twist on the tale that speaks of how drenched she was while seeing that. I mean, after all, it was raining, right? There were also sad moments, like the moment the tyrannical Kuma interrupted their romance voyage by splitting them apart. Ooh. <laughs> the moment still gives me more chills than the ghost of my great uncle, Gagorio. The moment Nami cried for Luffy after the loss of his brother. She spoke of his heart. You know that bait got a lot of fish to bite. Then there's every moment that Nami hugs Luffy. Rest assured, every person on their boat has a mini heart attack when it happens and they will let you know about it. Maybe they'll mention how comfortable Luffy is tightening around Nami's body. Ooh, saucy. Oh, and Nami blushed when Reiju healed Luffy by putting her mouth on his. That was something to behold. Without question, these two have been through a lot, and as would be expected, have a relationship that shows it. When you hear the storytellers spin their yarns about why these two will probably get hitched, you'll run into the common point that the two trust each other so much and that they're very comfortable with each other. Maybe they'll mention how Luffy giving his prized possession to Nami means something special. Maybe they'll talk about how Nami's father figure gave a speech befitting of a daughter's significant other. They'll tell you that Luffy's treatment of Nami is more special than the way Luffy treats another crew member he declared war against the world government for. All kinds of people sail under this flag, all kinds of perspectives. Regardless, okay, let's drop the bit here because now I gotta be a little bit more serious. As I was saying, special trust and care. We already have enough neutral, intimate moments uh, to talk about this ship with. It becomes just a matter of questioning the subtle motivations behind why these moments are happening. And interestingly enough, the common critique of this pairing, what other people will say to dismantle this ship, is that they will bring up the external story context and say that the story of One Piece disagrees with the idea of the ship. Of course, this reason is the one most frequently cited. It makes sense. It's because Luffy and Nami already have such a close and intimate dynamic that you need the story context in order to argue effectively. No one should be able to argue that Luffy and Nami aren't close. The argument is why they are close and whether or not there is something there. Taking that into account, the story context creates the environment where while yes, the interactions between the two could be true for people who have romantic feelings for each other, uh, the story context justifies that those moments can also happen for people who are just close friends, maybe even so close that they consider each other family at this point. I mean, all things considered, Luffy and Nami have been through many a stressful situations enough to forge some really strong bonds. At this point, you will see people bringing up 
Luffy's characterization that he cares for many of his crew members. Maybe they'll also reference the God of the Sea, Oda's words, that One Piece isn't about romance, that it's about the adventure. Or maybe they'll reference how Oda characterized the Straw Hats as a family unit and their roles in that family. That came from a special note from him from one of the volumes. Now mind you, story context will almost always sink ships. It will actually take out the majority of ships. Because at its root, shipping is a fan-based activity. It takes an idea that may not even have that much support and blows it up. On the other hand, the story context is derived from the themes of the story. In this case for One Piece, the themes are clearly defined to be the romance of adventure, freedom, and caring for your friends. If you have an author who is careless with the ship teasing, then things will blow up even more, obviously. But that's not really the case with One Piece. So story context is a very general reason, but for this ship, for Nami and Luffy, it's really the thing that you have to use to argue because otherwise you're going to start playing the game of guessing at what characters are thinking based on your observations and at that point you've devolved into to the same kind of guesswork that the other side is doing. There's also another subset that would say that they're at sea so often for like the span of weeks at a time and there's only 8 other people around. When you keep that in mind, you realize things might happen. And so to chime in on that rationale, if we were talking real world logistics here, the odds of these two getting together even for just one night would be a lot higher in the real world than they are in the manga I believe. Uh, and that's because the manga presents simplified behaviors and simplified characteristics. The characters tend to be more ideal when it comes to certain drives and their behavioral patterns are also more idealized. For instance, you won't see an accurate representation of hormonal cycles and their effect on human behaviors and emotions here. It just won't happen and why should it? That's not fun for anyone. We have to remember we're dealing with characters based on archetypes, they're not people. So you cannot expect that kind of complexity out of them, especially in the context of One Piece. Uh, so to try and rationalize extra reasons why this could happen, it's an exercise in futility, but it's fun if you want to have fun with it. Anyway, Nami and Luffy as an endgame couple, I really doubt it's going to happen. From what I have read from Oda and from what I've interpreted from the way he handles romance, I just believe that Nami and Luffy are just the greatest of friends. I would however go on record saying that Nami could be the most important person to Luffy in a sense. After all, she's his navigator. Without her, he would die. And likewise, Luffy's probably the most important person to Nami in that he is her savior and also her captain. Uh, whether or not importance translates to relationships, well, that depends on the person. And that really is the crux of the argument when it comes to arguing against Luffy and Nami. And very quickly, even saying that on the matter of importance, even when I try to think of an example of someone who is important to me, but yet not romantically involved, well, like my natural jump is family. You know, like maybe a sister or a mother or a child. And then when you try and bring that back to the Straw Hats, this is a case where they're not family by blood bonds, but is that secondary family, that surrogate family that they've established, that family unit that they have, is that bond enough to supersede romantic relationships? And so in that case, it just, it becomes understandable why the idea of importance, if someone's the most important person to you and they're not related to you, it, it makes sense why you would think that they would be romantically involved. Heck, in the majority of cases in the real world, that probably is the case. If you have someone that's the most important person to you, I, I'm i willing to bet the majority of people in that situation, that most important person to you is someone you're romantically involved with. If they're not your family, of course. But because this is fiction, of course, uh, the importance card can still be put up to question. I do think we could end this story without the two being together, in the same sense that we could expect to end the story without Luffy and Usopp being together, or Luffy and Robin being together, or Luffy and Chopper being together. Because at this point, what we have seen from the Straw Hats is at baseline, they all deeply care for one another. They have their own unique ways of expressing it, but when you just keep that in mind, um, it makes more sense that we could just have the full family unit of the Straw Hats ending as just a family and not any kind of romantic pairings. There's enough precedent to believe that. 
And I really do think Luffy may just end up having a love child with someone else. It could happen. From what we've seen from the author, Oda likes showing the end results of romance and he doesn't really care for the teasing aspect. And that's why I would ultimately recommend not getting too invested in the end game prospect because he's not going to overtly just show you ship teasing moments, he's instead going to show you emotionally intense moments and then because they're so emotionally intense you know there is that bias to want to believe there's something more behind it. But at the end of the day I think you're better off not getting too invested. However like all other ships if you want to have fun in the fandom yeah go for it tell your stories about Luffy and Nami but just keep in mind this might not happen and to be of a perspective where you may want to pretty much die for your ship uh, I think that's a bit I think that's a bit too much like that we could we could tone it down a little bit like again it's cool to like something but it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous to get really fanatical about it um, but most people know that it's it's good to not be a fanatic uh, that said uh, Luffy and Nami I'm not gonna lie guys back when I started One Piece I was totally Luffy and Nami I watched all the AMVs but nowadays uh, I'm not in that perspective anymore just because this is just a neat thing to watch I, I just enjoy seeing the two characters together sometimes I enjoy seeing Luffy interact with Frankie a lot too uh, but uh, yeah guys anyway uh, that's pretty much the end of the video for me um, overall well, well, what topics did we cover? Well, uh, you know, the moments, the big moments that pop up for the pair and uh, the main rationale and the main argument for why people argue for Nami. Uh, because One Piece is so long, naturally, this is a much more simplified discussion. So guys, I would love to hear why you ship Nami and Luffy if you ship them. Tell me your rationales. Tell me your favorite moments from the manga or anime. Let me know if there were any moments that did not pop up in the video that you'd also like, you know, kind of shown a light on. And I am still planning a part two to this video. So depending on the input that we get from you guys, I will make the secondary follow-up video to just explore some of the uh, some of the interesting rationales that you guys have. And also there will be the next video, which is um, talking about a serious problem that is present with Nami and Luffy's relationship. Well, it's not a problem, but it's a really interesting dynamic and I think it's worth talking about. So that will be a much more discussion based video for the two. Uh, this is the shipping video. Anyway, guys, yeah, let's do that. Let me know your favorite Nami Luffy moments. Let me know why you ship the two if you do. And uh, yeah, till next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.